Hello and welcome to the Nerd Cave. So, uh, it's been a little while since we've been in here, actually. For the most part, <laughs> just trying to get things sorted over Christmas time, all that sort of stuff. There was a lot of rubbish in here. Um, I just didn't have time to come in and actually do what I wanted to do, which is paint. Uh, play around with making miniatures and that sort of thing. Um, what brings me here and what brings us... Uh, Dexter, come on. <laughs> what brings us here is uh, I had a vlog that I put up a couple of days ago where uh, I... Please leave the lights alone. Come on, man. Yes. Stop it. So, what brings us here? Well, a couple of days ago, I put up a vlog entry where I actually showed off one of the miniatures that I've painted over the last couple of days. Leave the microphone alone. And I had a couple of people, you know, sort of privately and that sort of thing, express interest. A couple of friends who I'd shown it to as well. And, uh, and... Oh, get off, get off. Oi. A couple of people privately expressed interests. Uh, a couple of friends that, you know, I, I've painted with on occasion or have plans to paint with in the future, having a nerdy hobby day. Um, and uh, this one person who actually commented on a video, uh, V Verde, and they sort of said like, look, this looks pretty interesting. It, it definitely seems like a nerdy sort of thing. Can you expand on that a little bit? And I thought, you know what? I can do that. So I've recorded uh, the other day while I was painting the second miniature out of that box set um, from start. So from a base white primer um, after having assembled everything and, and glued it all together and that sort of thing. And I've gone through every single step. So it's not going to be as high a production value as some painting tutorials that you'll see out there. Um, if, you know, you Google for Warhammer painting tutorial or anything like that, you'll find countless videos from people that are much better at it than me. But this is a thing that I've been doing since, since I was about 13. Uh, just putting together miniatures, painting them in various sort of styles. Uh, I've definitely improved over the years, but you know, you, you spend like 20 years doing stuff, you, you'll probably get a little bit better at it. So, without further ado, let's get into it. The miniature I'm going to be painting today is from Games Workshop. Uh, it's a Citadel Miniatures production sort of thing um, from a game called Warcry, which is a fantasy skirmish game. So, uh, you know, wizards and um, swords and shields and bows and arrows and all that sort of stuff, as opposed to my usual sci-fi things, because I am at heart a sci-fi nut. I love sci-fi. And most of the things that I've painted over the last 20 years have been sci-fi. You can even see in the video all the way through <laughs> while, I'm, while I'm showing off the painting, there's a, a giant robot in the background that I've already finished and painted. It's just too big to fit in one of the storage boxes that I've got. So, you know, this this was a nice little break. There's a lot more skin on it than I'm used to. So that was uh, that was interesting, trying to get a recipe for that that looked right for the setting. Um, now, the way that Warcry uh, is uh, set up is it's a very, very cold, barren sort of... Uh, sort of wasteland in the, the northern realms of this fantasy world. And uh, there's a bunch of um, factions that fight for the favours of the dark gods. Um, now, my, <laughs> my guys are, you know, sort of not wearing very much clothing, so they, they're meant to look a little bit cold. There's not much sunlight, so quite pale and pasty, um, that sort of thing. And they, they tan the hides of their enemies and wear them. So, uh, so most of their clothes are made of skin. So I've got one set of skin that I have to paint for their flesh and another set of skin that I have to paint for what they're wearing, which, hmm, it's, it's a big challenge than you'd think. So what I'm going to be painting is a, an awakened one with brutal polearm. Without further ado, 
let's get into it. Strangely enough, I only got this, this giant magnifier, hello, uh, within the last week. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually come in quite a lot of use. Um, usually I don't magnify anything. It's, <laughs> it's why I wear these, because I can't see, because I ruined my eyes over many years. Hey. <laughs> so what I'm going to be using today is a variety of paint brushes. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different paints that I'm going to flash up quite quickly. They've all got some very interesting names, things like Pallid Witch Flesh, Demonette Hide, Null Oil, that sort of thing. And this thing that you can see in front of you is a wet palette. It's uh, basically a sponge with a piece of uh, paper on top of it, special paper. And it allows water to permeate through and soak into the paint that you put on the paper uh, and stops it from drying out. So the, the water gets sucked up into the paint to, uh, you know, sort of stop it from drying out and evaporating. And it's absolutely wonderful piece of kit. It took me a very, very long time to get my hands on one. And when I have opened this to finish off my miniature that I painted the other day, um, it had been around about three months since I'd opened it last. And the paint was still wet. It wasn't massively wet, but it was still still damp enough to paint with, which is kind of ridiculous. Now, the first step on the miniature is the flesh, because it's the largest area. So I'm going to start with a base coat of Rakarth flesh, and I'm going to paint that over all of the actual skin of the miniature. And here's what that looks like afterwards. Next, I'm going to block in the tanned flesh, the, uh, the leathery sort of skin that makes up the, uh, the little skirt that you can see there. And once that's all applied, that's what this looks like. Now we're going to do the black sections, uh, which is going to be a base coat for all of the metal pieces. Um, most everything is going to be silver or some sort of iron on these guys because they're low level grunts. They're, they're the very, very lowest level that you can have pretty much. Now I'm going to do something a bit different. I did this in a slightly different order last time, but what I'm going to do now is paint the purple for the, uh, for the uh, sash and that sort of thing. Okay, and with that, that's all of the base sections done, and it's time to move on to the second layer. So now we're going to start with uh, applying washes to the miniature. And what a wash does is it's a very thinned down paint uh, that uh, seeps into the recesses and just adds a little bit of depth to everything. So you paint it over skin, it'll settle into the recesses and, and just emphasize shadow uh, and the curvature of muscles and that sort of thing. Um, if you paint it onto clothes, it will add shadow into the folds of cloth. If you paint it onto something like chainmail, it actually just darkens down the metal and, and makes it look a little bit, uh, a little bit more realistic, a little bit oily sometimes. So we're going to apply various ones of that um, to different parts of the miniature, including making my own from Demonette Hide and Lamian Medium. The Lamian medium is essentially just an acrylic medium. An acrylic medium is uh, it's paint without the pigment in. It's, it's the suspension fluid that all these paints come in. And what that does is it dilutes the paint without changing the properties of it. Uh, so if you've got a, a thinned paint like I have here, um, you can paint it on. It'll go on as a uh, as more like a glaze than anything else. Because I watered it down a little bit, it acts more like a wash now. So it'll tint all of the skin um, of the base miniature with this, this interesting purple, which gives it a really cold very unhealthy sort of pallor. It's, it's not your, you know, sort of youthful pink or, or sort of orangey tones that you would get from uh, from like healthy tan skin. No, I'm, I'm using that to, to really sort of make the, the tanned flesh, the actual clothing that this miniature is wearing, look a little bit more, a uh, little bit more brownie, a little bit, um, a little bit worn, 
shall we say, a little bit aged. There's all the layers of the wash done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna go in and I'm going to um, start with the second layering of paint. So this is gonna be things like uh, painting the metal on top of the black sections. It's gonna be uh, doing my, uh, my, my sort of definition of muscles by painting the same uh, paint that we used for the base layer, the Rakar flesh, on top of the uh, the washed skin. So it, instead of just painting it as a flat layer over absolutely everything, you pick out the musculature. You uh, follow the curves and swells of, of biceps and triceps and that sort of thing. You don't have to be 100% perfect because that would lead to some weird look in the miniature, but you're trying to emphasize that there's a texture there, uh, and that can be a very interesting thing to try and do. There's the highlighting and edging on the cloth done as well. You'll notice that I haven't done anything extra to the tanned hide that the model's wearing. Um, that's because I'm actually quite happy with this effect. It looks slightly dirty, it looks slightly leathery. I don't think that I need to do much in the way of highlighting or anything like that. I think that would actually take away from it. Uh, and because it's not the, the focal point of the miniature at all, the, the focal point is the fact that it's this horrific thing that's charging towards you. It's not meant to look particularly well cared for. We're also gonna mess around with some of this stuff, which is blood for the blood god. Now this is a very special type of technical paint. Um, very similar to the washes and, uh, and the texture paint that you'll see shortly. Um, what this does is it looks very, very wet. It's got a lot of gloss varnish in it. So when you paint it on, this translucent sort of paint, it doesn't dry opaque, it dries translucent, it dries see-through, but extremely glossy. So it's going to look like there's wet blood on things. Um, there's techniques you can use with sort of browns and dark reds and that sort of thing to do dried blood, but in this case, I actually want it to look like the weapon has just been used. Um, painting it on things like the feet uh, and little spots over knuckles and things like that makes it look like this character's in a fight. They've skinned their knuckles, they've, they've ran over some, uh, some rocks and, and cut their foot open, that sort of thing. That's what I wanna go for. I wanna have this feeling that this character's in the middle of a fight because whenever they're standing on a table, they're in the middle of a fight. Okay, and that's all the painting done. So now we're going to mess around with this stuff, which is texture paint. Now, texture paint is a very, very interesting beast. It's paint that has sand and, and sort of ballast in it. And what happens is as you paint it onto a surface, when it dries, it leaves behind this sort of sandy texture. It does take a very long time to dry, but the effect is absolutely wonderful. Uh, you get some that has crackle medium put in. Uh, what happens with crackle medium is when you paint it on a surface, as it dries, uh, it, it sort of um, dries in clumps. So it breaks apart from everything. If you want a, a texture of uh, shale or granite or something like that, um, that's, that's what you want to use. Um, now this stuff is, is basically just gray sand in paint, which is gonna be, uh, gonna be useful for a sort of barren wasteland. Okay, now that that has dried, we're gonna do another section that takes a very, very long time. I'm gonna use this Agrax Earthshade here, and I'm going to paint that as a wash on top of the dried texture paint that we've just used. And what that'll do is add depth to the sand. It'll sort of sink into the recesses. It'll add a little bit of, uh, a little bit of dirt and, and that sort of thing. Now, this one I'm not going to be as careful about putting on the feet because what, what will happen is uh, painting it on the feet uh, and around the sort of ankle sections, that sort of thing, um, that will give the impression that uh, the character's been running through dirt and sand, uh, you know, their, their feet aren't clean, there's, there's muck on their skin, that sort of thing. Um, as well, um, on the raised foot, I'm gonna paint on a little bit of um, 
null oil as well, a little bit of the, the black wash. And that's just going to add that little bit of extra dirt and grime. And now that that Agrax Earthshade is dry, I'm going to dry brush. Now, dry brushing is a very interesting technique, and I'm going to show you a little bit more of it. Um, what you do is you take a brush that you don't particularly care about, in this case, this one, and you get a little bit of paint on the brush. And then you dab it onto a paper towel and work the paint into the bristles and take off most of the paint that you've gotten on there. Once you've got your uh, paint worked into the bristles, but not 100% dry, there's still a little bit in there, you take the brush and you pass it in slightly circular motion, sort of back and forth, left to right, um, at a very, very shallow angle. And the paint that is left on the brush is going to uh, get dragged out onto the very, very topmost um, sort of uh, peaks of this texture paint. It just brings out that extra depth. It adds that height to it uh, and gives it a, a, a very interesting sort of texture as well. And this is a really, really good effect. It, dry brushing is a thing that you can use for armor. In this case, I didn't use it for the armor. I, I just painted it flat because my my sort of thinking is the mask that these characters are wearing is uh, is uh, just like pure silver that's been fashioned into a mask as opposed to something like pig iron or, or anything like that. So I don't use much dry brushing on this miniature. It's mostly just the base here. And now that everything else is done, every single bit of painting, now it's time to get the tweezers. The reason we're getting the tweezers is because we're going to apply some of this stuff. This is Army Painter Battlefield's Highland Tufts. And what these are is it's small, uh, small stickers that have grass effects on them. It's very, very similar to paintbrush bristles, but uh, it, it looks very much like grass. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the mid-sized ones and put it on the base here. And then I'm going to take one of the small tufts and I'm going to place that right next to it. So that it looks like there's a, a, a very odd little outcropping of this, this grass. Only, only a very, very small amount of it. We don't want it to look too lush with vegetation or anything like that. We, we want scrubland. That's what we're going for here. And with that, the miniature's done. So I'll put in some uh, some nicer close-up shots here. I've, I've been taking them throughout the video, but I don't think they've turned out too well. So we'll deal with that as we deal with it. But that's it. That's an entire miniature painted in my color scheme for the unmade warband that I have. Going on from now, I've still got seven miniatures to paint before this box is empty. And as you can see from this little clip that I recorded right at the very, very beginning, I have a lot of miniatures assembled that need painting. I've got this box, which is the unmade, which is the rest of this warband. I have this box, which is the last three or four miniatures for a kill team for Warhammer 40,000. This is the sci-fi game. Um, and these are my armored warriors that are, are meant to be a small sort of special ops unit that uh, infiltrates. I've painted a bunch of them, but I've still got these ones that need finishing off. And I've got the rest of these miniatures here, which are my cultists, or what's going to be my cultists, that are used in the sci-fi game. Uh, I'm going to put my unmade with them when I play these larger games uh, set in the sci-fi universe. So these are uh, you know, sort of people that have decided to devote themselves to the, the dark gods, the old ones. And they come from all walks of life, so we've got some, uh, some actual... Uh, deranged worshippers of chaos, which come in this sort of box, and then we've got some uh, some actual soldiers, some uh, some planetary defense force, an actual army that has uh, you know been infiltrated by these people and, and uh, sort of corrupted from within. 
And obviously we've got to have something like that because all the games that you play are happy and wonderful. And, you know, there's going to be some sort of balance where I get that sort of thing out because, you know, I've, I've got all my board games and they're usually things like feeding a panda or growing trees. So you, you've really got to have something for that, like, darker tendency within you. And why not? Well, there you have it. That is how I have painted one of the many, many miniatures that I've got. Um, what I might do is maybe set up a little photo booth and take a couple of uh, couple of really nice pictures of some of the other things that I've painted over the years. I did sell a lot of miniatures before moving to Germany, so I haven't got everything that I'm proud of, um, but I've I've definitely got a fair few. Uh, and now Dex is really calling for attention, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go and give him some some love. He went to the vets yesterday. <laughs> He's not very happy with us because uh, you know he, he needed vaccinations. He doesn't like it. So yeah. Oh well. Right. Thank you very much for joining me on this little exploration, this little Martin explains sort of thing. Uh, and I will see you very very soon for an extra special one. Thanks very much for joining me. Hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.